takeover regulations present a mixed bag for target companies and their promoters. But what about the impact on acquirers? On the first two episodes of this series, I asked if India's new takeover court is pro-promoter. The limit has been raised to 25%. means you have much more options uh, for getting in funding. I know there is a looming threat, but I think more that this is an opportunity for us as a promoter to increase our holding in the company. I think it's a biggest fraud ever played in Indian market. When you have a promoter who is biggest insider, we have actually put restrictions on promoters from creeping or increasing their shareholding. Every other shareholder is free to increase or decrease their shareholding. Intention is to not encourage hostile takeover. Other things in the code which make uh, a competing offer or a hostile offer are better. Whether they sh the promoters in uh, evolved sort of, or at least a substantially evolved uh, capital market should now be multi-cordial anymore. On this third episode of Rules of the m and Game, I'm going to argue that the new takeover code is anti-acquirer. And to tell me if I've got it right or wrong, I'm joined by a brand new panel on this third episode of Rules of the M&A Game. Somashekar Sundaresan, Amrish Shah, Raj Balakrishnan, welcome to all three of you and welcome back to you, Mr. Shah. On this show, three numerical limits, 25%, 26% and 75%. Now, much has been said already on raising the substantial acquisition threshold to 25%, giving financial investors a bigger investment opportunity opportunity and arming seemingly hostile investors with nuisance value. So we won't waste time on that number. For those investors who cross the 25% substantial acquisition threshold or acquire control, the track had recommended a mandatory open offer for 100% of the outstanding shares. But SEBI decided on increasing the mandatory open offer size only to 26%. I get why they didn't go all the way to 100%, but what's the relevance of 26%? Why not 30? Why not 40? Why not 50? But I've never completely understood why the 100% offer was not allowed because that was a logical, consistent way of uh, completing this exercise and it's really unfinished business for a review at some later stage for why it should not be 100%. Having increased it to a level of 25% as a trigger point, which is very substantial, stopping short by just saying 26% is sort of neither here nor there. Now, there are serious conceptual issues with it. But 26% is only so as to be able to enable you to add the two and come to 51. I don't, I don't think that was the logic okay. either because ultimately you can make an offer. There's no restriction on making an offer which is larger than. Then, yeah, so why go from so, your mandatory offer size, minimum size, so to 20 to 20? It was a little neither here nor there, I think, Sir Shroff said. It's good news at all. It's good news at all. Yeah. One of the fundamental themes of the track recommendations was a full sized offer. Exception that full size offer rule was a smaller size offer for voluntary acquisitions. Right. Because you're asking a full size offer to be made, we said allow delisting beyond 90. Then it was said that if you fall short of 90 but above 75, give someone an option to prorate his acquisition and stay compliant. All of that is out of the window. So this is anti acquirer. You buy anything beyond 49%. You make an open offer for 26, there's a realistic chance you are in breach of the listing agreement. Yeah. Every single acquisition above 49 could take you above 75. And in the context of what was said in track, it was said they don't launch a delisting uh, until you become compliant. That's been changed to say don't launch a delisting for the next 12 months. Yeah. It's completely, it beats logic. Yeah. You make an offer for 26, you end up at 74, you can launch a delisting straight away. If you end up at 75.01, you got to wait 12 months, even if you shed that 0 0.01. And come back below so the... There is no logic. There is no logic. Before you jump into 75, before you jump into 75, I still want to know if there's any sense to 26%. Why 26%? Why not 30%? Why not 35%? Less than 100, but still substantially more than 20%. What is going to move from 20 so to 26? Yeah, so let's look at it differently. If you do not want to allow to go to 100% for whatever were the financing constraints for Indian Inc. Which is the excuse that was put out. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So let's say if, if that is taken as is, then there are only two other logical things that I would see it. You know, one is 75, you say that you will write up to 75 because that's your, you know, threshold for promoter holding. Right. I think that should have been a logical end because when you're giving a larger canvas to my, my, my share plus order, a, 50 a public shareholder. Yeah, so 25 plus a 50. So you're giving a larger canvas to the minority shareholders to participate. Right. Uh, with, you know, that level of thing. 
Uh, obviously, the issue that would have come then is that if you have acquired 50 or 51 from somebody, would you do only 24? Hmm. Or what will you do? So I think they should. They wanted some minimum at least, hmm. and they said like 25 and 26. If it gives control to somebody, that sort of thing, you know, bring success out of roughly 20 percent kind of is in that same zone. Uh, I guess it does zone. give that control to somebody if, have, if that offer you know goes through. So 25 to 26. Yeah. So is there is some sort of you know uh, majority control for somebody. And and nothing stops you from doing a 50% offer if you want it. Yeah. And yeah. what is what is 51 is not a media explanation. It's not, no, it's not. official it explanation. It was mentioned in the press conference, but, but it's not a media There's conference. one nuance to it. There's one nuance to it which I've been thinking about. Every offer today with this 25% trigger and a 26% size is potentially an acquisition triggered by Regulation 3 and Regulation 4. Hmm. Because if you end up getting a full response to the open offer, hmm. you would end up at 50% plus and therefore de jure, you would have control. So every trigger today would have to be made under regulation 3, 3.1 3 which is the 25% trigger and potentially 4. Because at the consummation of the open offer, you could be a majority. So there has been some dispute that said in fact the Shukran dispute was about whether he was wrong in not quoting Regulation 12, which is a trigger for control, because in that case they said he is acquiring 22 plus 20 percent would take him to 44, so he would be the single largest shareholder. That is a theory in that decision. Uh, but today, every acquisition which triggers an open offer would potentially end up giving the acquirer control, and therefore it would be, it would be an offer made under 3 1 as well as four. So okay. somebody is only talking in English. I don't know what he said. No. Somebody is going to explain the outcome of this to me. The way Does 26 no. make sense? The, the, the way I look at it, they kind of seem to have said, look, 15 is going to 25. Uh, so let's make 20, let's take it up. Huh. They didn't do it pro rata, they have done it less than pro rata. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I would have thought 15 years, 25 makes 20, 30. It's a nice sounding number. It's a minimum floor. You can actually do much more than that. Yeah. It's it a nice sounding number. It would have achieved more or less the same. Uh, thing, right? I don't know, I think if you had kept it at 20, it would have been literally you're buying 25 and you're buying less than that. So I suspect that they may have, have to make it, it more than that. Make it more than that. So, so one another interpretation, you're giving me it's 1% more than 25. <laughs> okay, fine. Now we'll come to the more serious and important issue of what happens when you cross 25, you do an open offer, and you hit 75%. Coming up, the consequences of crossing 75%. Uh, frankly speaking, pretty inequitable from the perspective of an acquirer.